negative x plus 3 minus 2. If we're trying to graph that, remember we started yesterday. Um, if you look at that example, it started with the original or the basic uh, function. So you look at just what the base of your exponential is there. The base is 3. So for the first, on the first graph there, we are going to graph just regular old y equals 3 to the x. Okay, and remember the key points that we were instructed to use, we were supposed to plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Um, now, I honestly, I can't really read to see what the scale on that is, but we're just going to call each block as 1. Okay, so when we plug in negative 2, that's 3 to the negative second power. That means we square 3 and we put it in the denominator, so that's 1 ninth. So we're pretty close to the x-axis right there. When x equals negative 2, um, we're pretty close to the x-axis. Okay, when we plug in negative 1, 3 to the negative first. Move it because of the negative exponent, so that's 1 over 3. So we haven't gotten much bigger here. It is a little bit bigger. We've risen a little bit, but not too much. What do we get when we plug in 0? 3 to the 0 is 1. Okay, remember that was always a key point that they all shared when it was just a number raised to x. It's always the point 0, 1. Okay, when we plug in 1, what do we get? Whatever the base is. When we plug in 1, our base is 3, so we get 3. 1, 3 is a point here. And when we plug in 2, 3 squared is 9. So let's see if it goes up far enough. 3, 6, 9. Yep, it goes up just far enough. Okay, so these are the points that we are going to be moving according to our transformations. Okay, according to our transformations. Now, I am going to go ahead and connect the dots, so to speak, so you see the shape of the graph. Okay, make sure that your function at this point does not go below the x-axis. Okay, it just gets really, really close to it. All right, now, the first thing that we always deal with is if there is a negative with the x. Okay, negative x means that you flip over the y-axis. So we take all of our points <clears throat> and we're going to reflect them over the y-axis. So where we did have the point at negative 2 1 ninth, now the point is at positive 2 1 ninth. Where our point was negative 1 1 third, it is now positive 1 1 third. The point 0, 1 does not change because it's on the axis, so it doesn't, when everything else flips, it's on the axis, so it doesn't change. The point 1, 3 is now negative 1, 3, and the point 2, 9 is now negative 2, positive 9. So that's the first part of our transformation. We are not finished. We've got two more things going on here. We are adding 3 in the exponent. Okay, so um, adding 3 in the exponent moves it right 3 units, and the subtracting 2 on the end moves it down 2. So I'm going to take my five key points, and I'm going to do that to each of them. So I'm going to start, I always start on the left and move to the right. So the point negative 2, 9 moves right 3 units. So that puts me at positive 1, 9. And then it goes down 2 units. So now I'm at positive 1, positive 7. So I took the point negative 3, 9, I moved it right 3, and down 2, so now it's at positive 1, 7. Okay, my next point was negative 1, positive 3. So if I move that right 3, I'm now at positive 2, 
positive 3? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, when I move negative 1, 3, right 3, I'm now at positive 2, positive 3, and then I move it down 2 units. So now we are at positive 2, positive 1. Our point zero 01, we've got to move that right 3, so now we're at 3, 1, and down 2, so now we are at 3, negative 1. We've got two more points. We've got 1, 1 third, and 2, 1 ninth. Okay, so 1, 1 third, if we move it right 3, we're at 4, x equals 4, and y is 1 third. 4, 1 third, and then down 2, it's a little bit harder to move the fractions, but just getting the general area there. And then 2, 1 ninth. Move that right 3, that puts us at 5. Uh, move it down to, we're at almost negative 2, not quite. And then connect the dots. Oops. Make sure that now you don't cross the line uh, negative 2 right here. one half to the x. This one's a little different. Okay, we don't really we don't have things adding and subtracting to this function. Uh, we're multiplying. So our base function, you just focus in on the base, is one half to the x. Okay, is the original idea here. So again, our uh, special points are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So when we plug in negative two, one half to the negative two power is equal to four. Okay. The negative flips it over, so it becomes positive two, or it becomes two over one, and then you square it, so that's where we get four. So when we plug in negative two, the answer is four. When we plug in negative 1, 1 half to the negative 1 power is 2. When we plug in 0, what's the answer? 1, always 1. Everybody should be able to get that part. Okay, when we plug in 1, the answer is what the base is. The base is 1 half. So we've got 0, 1, 1, 1 half. When we plug in 2, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So if I fill in the pieces here, connect the dots, approach the x-axis, but don't cross it. All right, the only thing that's being done to this is we are multiplying by 3. Okay, multiplying by 3, what that does, 3 times 1 half to the x, what that does is it multiplies all y values by 3. Multiply all our y's by 3. So, our original point was negative 2, 4. 
We multiply the y value by 3. That means our new point is negative 2, positive 12. And I believe that's off the graph. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, it's kind of off the graph. Plot it up there. Make a note of it over here on the graph. Negative 1, 2. Multiply the y value by 3. So that's now negative 1, 6. So 2, 4, 6. Zero, 1. Multiply the y value by 3. So it's now 0, 3. One, one half. Multiply the y value by three. One half times three is three halves, or one and a half. When we multiply one fourth by three, we get three fourths. So we have the point two, three fourths. So connect the dots. Let's talk a little bit here. Um, let's compare these two examples. Okay, the first one um, did the general shape of our function change at all from the original three to the x to our transformation where we flipped it and moved it right and down? Um, did the size or the shape of the graph actually change? No, it didn't. Okay, it stayed the same. Um, this is just a mirror image. This is just taking the exact same thing and moving it over and down. For this one, I know the general shape is the same, but how do these two compare to each other in terms of size? The second one's bigger, okay, or it's taller. Um, it's stretched because all of our y values are three times as great as they were originally were, so it's pulling your function up, um, stretching it vertically. Okay, so we actually didn't need that third grid right there. Um, okay, let's very quickly look at two more examples. See how all this happens. <clears throat> negative 2 to the negative x minus 1 minus 4. Negative 2 to the negative x minus 1 minus 4. A whole bunch of minuses in there. Okay, first thing I need to address here. Do y'all remember back to yesterday when we said that the base could not be a negative number? Maybe a little bit. Okay, the base can be a negative number. This base is not a negative number. Okay, I know there's a negative in front of the 2, but really what's happening here, <clears throat> Emily, pick up your head, please. That negative is like negative 1 times neg uh, 2 to the negative x minus 1 minus 4. Okay. If that were the base and they intended it for, to it to, for it to be negative 2, then they would have put negative 2 in parentheses. Okay. That's the difference between this and this. This is not negative 2 to the base. Positive 2 is the base for this example. Um, it's just we don't write a coefficient of negative 1. Um, we just put a negative in its place. Okay? So there are several things going on here, and I'm actually I'm not going to graph the original because we already have the original um, earlier on in our notes. Um, we have 2 to the x um, graph, so we can reference the special points from that because I need all three of these graphs to be transformations because there are um, three things going on. The negative in front is going to be a transformation. The negative with the x is a transformation. And then we're moving it um, left and down. Okay, so we need all three graphs here for our transformations. So the first one that I'm going to do is, yes? Yes. Yes. It was 3 to the negative x plus 3. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to start with the negative x again here. 